You might remember a year or so ago, I took a look at this Game of Thrones scene where a Targaryen, the dragon, is killed by having molten gold poured on his head. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Game of Thrones, but, but the science in this scene was just wrong on every level. See, while white walkers and dragons don't exist in our world, gold does. And gold has properties. For one, gold doesn't melt till about a thousand degrees Celsius. You can't just melt it on a little fire, nor in a pot used for cooking soup. And even if you could, the pot would be white hot by the time the gold melted. And even if you could pour it, most of it would run off a surface like this because of the high surface tension of the metal and the Leidenfrost effect of uh, anything that contains a lot of water. Pretty much like molten copper and an apple. Or something an insane Russian might do with molten iron. What it wouldn't look like is a man having thick gold soup poured on his head. Now, naturally, I wasn't this crazy to do something like this, nor did I have enough gold to do it, even if I wanted. So I settled for something a little smaller scale and a little less risky, pouring molten gold on a potato. So here I've got a high-speed camera filming at 5,000 frames per second, which is why there's all this really strong light on the potato. Let's see what happens. Well, first, in real time. There we go, done it. <laughs> and now, in slow motion. which is kind of the nearest thing I get to human experimentation with this sort of thing. Now you might be wondering, what was the fate of the potato that survived molten gold? Was he hideously burned? Can someone call an ambulance? I get quite a lot of pain. Okay. Well, no, he was almost completely unharmed, but when I came back almost a week later from filming, I saw that the potato had demonstrated its will to live by starting to sprout. So I thought, hey, this guy has earned another crack at life. Now I know absolutely diddly squat about growing plants. So at first I just put him on the soil, but he didn't really grow. Then I sprinkled a little soil on top of him and still nothing. Then I planted him a, a little way down and boom, he grew like crazy. Then, just like in Game of Thrones, winter came. And one day, he was all wilted and dead. So I brought the guy back in, not knowing if he was actually dead or merely playing dead for winter. Then randomly, early this year, I was stunned when this happened. Really, really quickly, this stalk just shot out of the ground. The speed at which it grew blew my mind. So I immediately set up a time-lapse camera. Now, there is actually something potentially fun to do here. You may notice that the leaves kind of follow the sun, but they also kind of reset when the lights are turned off. When the sun goes down, they pan back to where they expect the sun to be the next day. Really, watch this guy here. When the sun's there, it tracks the sun, but when there's no sun, it comes back again. Or when it's dark, it just sort of wobbles there in, in space. But it seems to bend back even when there's no light. So here's the question, if I have a powerful spotlight pointing at my plant and I turn it off, does it automatically pan back to where it expects it to be the next day? Or can I teach my plants with two powerful spotlights and some timer switches where the sun will rise the next day? Can plants really tell where the sun is going to rise tomorrow? Find out on this channel in a month or so. Again.
So if you enjoyed the potato who refused to die, uh, give this video a thumbs up. And remember, subscribing isn't enough to ensure that videos like this will appear in your subscriptions. You've got to hit that little bell that says notify, otherwise YouTube only might show you videos like this when I upload them. Oh, and uh, thanks for watching.